I think we need to stop pretending uh, that there's a distinct group of people who experience trauma. We can all be vulnerable. We can all have um, nasty things happen to us. It's like you're stripped. You're stripped of your worth, your beauty, your, you, you're stripped of all of those things. Um, we know that the majority of consumers of um, mental health, homeless health, drug and alcohol services um, have histories of childhood trauma. Trauma-informed care is essential. It needs to be throughout any service that works with people, basically, because we know trauma is so prevalent in our societies. You don't have to be a therapist to have trauma-informed understanding. I had this internal space of guilt and shame but I wasn't aware of that until I saw myself behaving in ways that I regret. The person might have high levels of distress, the person might be angry, the person can be abusive if they feel they're not getting what they need and are perceived as demanding, people feel rejected, people feel poorly listened to and poorly responded to. And all those sorts of responses are much more likely to trigger extremes of emotion. It's time to stop judging and time to accept people for whatever they've experienced and to honour the way they've, they've coped and managed um, to see people's strengths for having survived. The core principles of being trauma informed are fivefold. Safety, trustworthiness, choice, collaboration and empowerment. How is the organisation welcoming of clients? How is it set up to, to be reassuring rather than intimidating? Do the policies reflect trustworthiness and safety? Are processes made transparent to clients so they know what's going to happen to them? So it's not just about the service itself, it's the way in which the service is provided. You know, I'd been betrayed and hurt in, in you know, very primary relationships and it was very, very hard for me to trust uh, and to learn to feel safe. We need to have a trauma-informed understanding uh, that helps us um, understand the people that we're meant to be uh, helping and make sure that we have a relationship with them where they feel safe. I was so reactive to my life rather than choosing, this, choosing what I wanted to do with my life. And my reactions were based on moments in time from my past. And that, I wasn't aware of that. I saw a story that ASCA, in an ASCA um, DVD, of a young woman in America transitioning out of jail and going back to jail to speak to women. And she said it brilliantly. What happened to you in your childhood, it's, it, it's not who you are, it's what happened to you. Having an understanding of people's backgrounds of childhood trauma is very helpful to me as a mental health nurse because it means that when people are behaving in ways that I might find challenging, I can view those behaviours often as attempts to self-soothe. So if those organisations aren't what we say trauma-informed, if they don't know how to respond appropriately to people who experience complex trauma, they will compound the damage and unwittingly risk re-traumatising. Even if the scenario gets to the point where the conversation or the interview or the home visit needs to be terminated, there's a trauma-informed way of doing that. Um, that involves communicating very clearly and openly and painting the landscape to the person about what is happening. The way we respond to that is what's important. How do we best identify people who have been traumatised? How do we clarify what their needs are at the time? Is it a safety issue? Do they need emergency support and containment? Who else is there for them? Now, can we link them with a service that understands uh, trauma and its aftermath? Can we help them feel safe enough? The really amazing thing about trauma-informed care is that it's not just about improving care and outcomes for consumers, but it's also about improving 
workplaces for staff. Um, so everybody benefits. The first thing that needs to happen for services to become trauma informed is, is getting the education, getting the training um, for all the staff. This is ideally, you know, managers, CEOs, directors, as well as, you know, the reception staff, the first point of contact in any organisation. Sometimes the thoughts and the emotions that are inside of you can feel so big that they're overwhelming. I call them mini earthquakes and we all have things that trigger us. So it's like a little earthquake. What does an earthquake do? It shakes, you just find a safe place, stand, it passes, we're okay. So just pause, hold yourself, let other people hold you, it will pass, move on. If staff become much more trauma informed, their perception of consumer behaviours is transformed. Suddenly a patient isn't splitting or being manipulative what they then see is a person who is very distressed, security guards and acute, acutely sedating medication are options that fade into the background and you as a person and your skills come into the foreground as your tools to be able to address an acute situation. The people that work within a trauma-informed service are much more relaxed um, about you know how to carry out their role um, they feel supported by the service itself there's a higher level of um, contentment in the job itself so there's less stress there's more um, support around supervision around peer debriefing even just collegial support within the service and part of that is taking care of yourself um, trying as best you can to leave work on time, making sure that you have regular clinical supervision, um, going out for a walk and having a, a break when you need to, um, approaching your manager or a colleague for support. ASK has also produced a set of guidelines uh, for organisations. They don't presume any knowledge of, of clinical work but they do relate to people who are in contact with survivors of complex trauma, which means many workers, service organisations, not just within the health sector. Um, my advice to other practitioners is to learn, learn as much as they can about trauma-informed care. The ASCA website is a great place to start. We offer several trainings to organisations who initially wouldn't have seen themselves perhaps as in the market for this type of work. Many services are in fact dealing with people who have unresolved trauma and would benefit and do benefit from knowing about these trauma-informed principles. And that's why I love ASCA, because it's about putting those tools into people's hands. So I went to a professional development workshop first, <laughs> about 20 minutes in, I put my hand up and I went, so are you actually saying recovery is possible? Is that what your organisation is all about? And they're like, yes. I'm like, fabulous. If the whole world was trauma informed, then I think we'd have a totally different paradigm um, of services and service delivery. We'd have people actually in recovery from trauma rather than people being managed um, and contained which is our model at the moment primarily, so I think we'd, we'd, have, a, we'd have happier workers because a trauma-informed paradigm is, is, you know, job satisfaction for workers as well. It's, it's relational, so, you know, it's win-win it's for everybody. 